Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips. And on the bench today we have a President Lincoln. This one I acquired a while ago. So we'll have a look at it. See if we can um, do some things to it. But before we start, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join Facebook, join Patreon, buy me a coffee, have a look at my website, microchips.net. And let's get started. So, we all know the President Lincoln. As you can see, this one has got some display issue here. I'm not sure what that's all about. Hopefully it's not a damaged LCD unit. And of course, the frequency change um, encoder is absolutely rough as they normally are skipping just not behaving itself quite a common problem on these but if you're careful you can actually take them apart and clean them so that's what we're going to be doing and we're going to have a look at that display as well so inside the radio you can see this is one of the later ones with the pill chip now one of the common problems with these radios or should we say issues is these regulators that are just sat on glue basically which isn't ideal because these linear regulators run stinking hot so we're going to change this and we need to get rid of this glue we need to change these caps as well Basically, this glue can go conductive over time. So I've lifted the regulators up, and as you can see, they've been getting really, really toasty. That's to be expected from a linear regulator. So there's nothing unusual about the regulators, but we're going to move them and actually put them onto a heat sink. So yeah, these things have been getting hot over the years and eventually that glue will go conductive and cause us problems, especially around those two capacitors. Yep, yeah, definitely quite crusty under there. But we can sort that. So as you can see, we've actually got the PLL board out and what we need to do is we need to remove these regulators to start off with. So using the trusty desoldering gun, we will desolder these regulators, just like so. I'll have to move that diode as well, just out of the way, and we'll be putting that back. Once we've attended to the um, regulators. So that should be our regulators loose. So, just for neatness, we'll get rid of the crusty glue. Why on earth they thought putting it on, sticking the regulator down with glue, putting it on glue was a good idea. I really don't know. Well, I suppose I had the reasons. But even if these linear regulators are not regulating a lot of current, these things do run hot. And it's always best to put them onto a heat sink or some form of heat heat sink. Just having them flapping about in the breeze like that is, for me, it's not good. As you can see, the back of the regulators, these things have been getting really toasty, which isn't any surprise, really. So 
I'm just using a flat scalpel blade. I'm going to cut off all this crusty glue. Just like so. Give us a nice finish again. Yeah, this thing is definitely well baked. Could have put new regulators in, but I didn't have the correct voltage for one of them, so. And I say old regulators weren't faulty in any way. Might as well just reuse them. As you can see, lots of crusty glue everywhere. Absolutely lovely. So that's that cleaned off nicely. Eight volt regulator, and we've also done the other one. So we've got a five volt and an eight volt regulator there. So what we're going to do is we're going to mount the regulators onto the back of the tray where the PLL board sits. And as you can see, I've already drilled two holes into the back of the, um, the tray, the metal work. And we'll fit those in a minute. And whilst we're in there, we're going to look at the, the rotary encoder. So I've taken the rotary encoder off the board. I'm carefully going to cut away these melted retention pins. Take the back away. Don't look at how this thing comes together because we don't want to put it back the wrong way. But it looks like it's only single sided. Well, there's our encoder and there's our contacts and all it is is that this has just got dirty over time so a little bit of contact cleaner onto a cotton bud we'll go around and we'll clean those contacts needed put a little bit of um, WD in there as well bit of WD 40 just so it's not completely dry but yeah as you can see nice and dirty I'm doing the same again with the spring contacts bit of contact cleaner on a cotton bud being very careful not to bend these because if we bend these or break these it's game over just gently wiping them with the cotton bud and last but not least we're just going to just lift them up a little bit give a little bit more tension on them that should be our encoder sort it out so putting it back together is exactly the same as taking it apart luckily it's not too complicated not like taking apart say a cybernet channel change we all know how fun they can be There's our encoder back together. Just use a little bit of super glue on the back just to hold that metal plate in. And that's our encoder fixed. 
Right, so now we need to attend to this display. So first off, we're going to remove this. Yeah, LED um, rear backlight. Yeah, that's definitely a bit how you're doing. So to take this module out is an absolute pain, but we got it out in the end. And as you can see, the actual line on the screen itself was actually just flux or something that has ran down in between the the um, card for the backlight and the LCD. So using a little bit of 99% IPA on a cotton bud, we can clean that off. And hopefully that makes our display look a lot better. So just being nice and gentle with this, because I don't want to break the actual LCD itself. And there's our regulators fitted to our um, metalwork for the um, processor PLL unit. Excessively cable tied. Yeah, that should be nice. So we've refitted the front display. Um, now we need to deal with these LEDs. Looks like they've been changed multiple times. They are quite bright these LEDs so they would have made a nice um, nice backlight but it doesn't look very sightly does it? So we'll just have a quick look at that and yeah I think we can do better than that. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace it with a nice bulb as it should be. And we're going to fit a green cap over the top of it. Just like so. And hopefully that'll give us a nice a nice green display. So there's the actual LCD itself. No more line on it and it's looking good. And switching it on. Got a nice green display. It's nice and clear. I think that's a win. So yeah, that's looking good. And the rotary encoder is working beautifully as well. It's not skipping or jumping. It's doing exactly what it should be doing. So all it leaves now is to solder the speaker back on. And then it's going to be job done. So it's quite enjoyable working on this Lincoln. Sorting out a few of the little issues. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join Facebook, join Patreon. Buy me a coffee. Have a look at my website, microchips.net. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next episode.